Good morning and welcome to the Digital Coffee Facebook Live and this is all the social media news you need to know this week and you can see we've got a bit of Periscope news. Periscope doesn't appear on the board very often. We've got LinkedIn news, we've got a lot of Facebook as usual, we've got Twitter. If you know somebody that would like to see this week's news, please click the share button underneath, let them know about it. You could share in a group, you can share by private message, you could share on your timeline. Good morning, Kate. Do you want to see my mug? And by that, I mean the cup in which my coffee is held. I'm very excited about this. Are you ready? Here you go, that's a thumbs up. Oh, you see, I can't get this left right thing working. Okay, here's my mug. It's a very cute mug. The owls are not as it seems. This is kind of a reverse Father Ted because in fact, this is a tiny mug. Look, it's a little tiny espresso cup. Good morning, Sinead, thanks for joining. Um, so I am having a double espresso in my The Owls Are Not What They Seem mug. Let me know what you're drinking. It's actually really nice. I got this mug last week and I've been putting off having it because I like volume in my coffee, but I'm kind of, I think I could get used to it. I only really drink espresso when I'm in Italy, but now we're just going to kind of prove that we can drink classy coffee too. So Kate, is it tea? It's tea for you. Sinead, tea, coffee, hot chocolate? <laughs> yeah, he's very cute, isn't he? He's very, very cute. Okay, I'm going to talk through um, the basics of the news. I still don't know what you're drinking, Sinead. I may have missed your, co your comment, but I'm dying to know. I bet it's nothing. It's a nothing, isn't it? Right, so we've got, um, we've got LinkedIn news. LinkedIn always seems to come out their news on Mondays, so they get top of the board. We've got two little bits of Periscope news. We've got some Facebook news, some Twitter news, some stats from YouTube that are really interesting. And actually, it's more about the way they frame those stats that I want to talk about. Um, Facebook news, and there's so much Facebook news, my last Facebook has fallen over on his back and he's gone to sleep because it's Friday after all. Right, let's start with LinkedIn. Let me grab my notes. Did you hear loads of things falling on the floor? Okay, here we have it, my notes for today. It's raining outside here, it's quite depressing. It's asking me to sign into the iTunes store. This is the beauty of live video. Okay, here we go. I didn't need to shoot, log, log in. It's all okay. Right, so LinkedIn, as you may know, um, have changed their user interface. It's a, a lot bigger now. Hi Naomi, thanks for joining. Um, it's a lot bigger now, uh, a lot different now. It matches their mobile experience. I think it's a nicer interface, but they took away a whole load of stuff, which is kind of upsetting. A lot of the things that I, when I teach LinkedIn, I go, oh, this is brilliant. Not a lot of people know about this, but it's brilliant. They're gone. One of the things they took away was saved searches, which were kind of cool because if you were searching for leads within a specific industry, you could do that on LinkedIn. You could click it, save search, and then it would notify you both by email and by a notification on LinkedIn or whichever preference of those you wanted, of new people it had found within that search result. That was gone. But it's back. Yes, it's back. So apparently this wasn't meant to be taken away from free users. Hi, Eleanor, thanks for joining. It was supposed to always be, um, always be there. Now it has changed slightly. I'm gonna show you where you'll find it. So if you um, do a search on LinkedIn, a people search, it has to be a people search. So I did a search for cats, of course, because there's lots of cats on LinkedIn. <laughs> well, I didn't find any cats. I found people that talked about cats in their LinkedIn profile. But when you go in there, I did a search for cats and then I selected people and you can still modify that a little bit by industry and stuff along those lines. Those features are still there on your free account. And then at the bottom, you have to scroll down a little bit and on the right hand sidebar, you'll see that is where it is now, create search alert. It's still there, this is good news. I think you're limited to five searches on the free account, but still really handy tool to have. The difference is you used to be able to name your searches. So, hi Greg, 
look, there's Greg and he is a LinkedIn expert. So you probably know more about this than me. If you do, Greg, know how many free saved searches we get on LinkedIn, that's what we're talking about. So it's back in a way, that's good news. Um, but you can't name the search at the moment. They're just kind of searches there. I d that doesn't make a big difference to me. I'm glad to see it returned. On to my, hi, Una Ming. God, we're busy today. Do let me know if you're drinking tea or coffee. I want to do my stump with a mug again. Kate, Sinead, I hope you don't mind if I do my stump with a mug again. Three, I guessed five, that's good to know. So three free saved searches on LinkedIn. Okay, this is the mug I am drinking my coffee out of today. It's a new mug. Oh, I can't get used to the left, right thing. See, the owls are not what they seem. If any Twin Peaks fans there, because actually, look, it's a really tiny mug. <laughs> Gotta have a bit of a fun on a Friday uh, news show. On to the Periscope news then. We're going to, my light is now flickering, bear with me one second. I'm going to just get challenged all day on this Facebook Live. So we're going to give LinkedIn a thumbs up for returning saved searches. Thank you, LinkedIn. On to Periscope news. Just so I don't forget anything. Um, Periscope um, have two bits of news this week. So we don't have them for ages. For those of you who aren't aware of Periscope, Periscope is Twitter's version basically of live streaming, what we're doing now. It was a standalone app, but now it's completely integrated into Twitter. So Twitter Live is powered by Periscope. Two bits of news. The first thing is a while ago they released Periscope Producer, which allowed um, accounts of a certain size to be able to stream from any device. Now, it might not seem so exciting because not everyone has a GoPro or not everyone has an internet enabled device. But what you could do is you could use tools like OBS or Wirecaster to do a more involved show with titles and stuff along the lines. You, if you've been watching this show for a while, you'll know I experimented with OBS. My computer and internet just weren't fast enough. But this is really handy because now you can make similar shows with all the bells and whistles, two person shows for Periscope as well as for Facebook. Um, so I can see a lot more people using it. So everyone now has access to Periscope producer. Will I be using it? Probably not. When I use Periscope, it's usually when I'm out and about and there's a sudden, oh, I must share this moment. But I can see it being very effective, particularly for those people who have a large audience on Twitter specifically. And the second update, and this is one I can see myself using, is that Periscope have um, a thing called groups. So you can have like a WhatsApp group on Periscope of a group of people and then when you broadcast, you broadcast just to those people. So it could be a lot like those apps like House Party or it could even replace things like Skype conferencing. There's been a problem though with groups up until now. Um, the first problem has been that, um, like Facebook groups, somebody can just add you to a group. You don't have an option to be added to a group. Um, my light is really going to run out of batteries any second now, so I'm just going to switch it off. It, it may all go dark. Ah, I think I actually look better. So um, they've changed that now, so you can change your settings so that you can decide whether you want to join a group or not which makes sense seem to be having some technical issues this morning i'll have to watch later video won't stream for me i hope the rest of you can see me that's no problem no me i'll catch you later on um so now they've got these things called closed groups and the problem with closed groups before the problem with groups before in general was that other members of the group so i could set up a group for just my close friends and somebody else could just add people at random i had no control over that now, that's good to know, Kate, I'm glad. I'm glad you can all see me because there's been a few of you on this morning, which is great. Um, so this is good because now I can completely have control of, over who's invited to the group. I can see groups really taking off. In fact, I hate to admit it, but I didn't know about groups until this update. Hi, Sarah, thanks for joining. It's working for you? That's good stuff. Um, I didn't know about groups now, but I'm kind of excited about them. So um, myself and Kate are actually going to Social Media Marketing World 
in a few weeks time god it's just a few weeks now and um i know there's going to be a lot of irish people there so it'd be nice if we could have a, a little chat group whether the internet will hold it or not i don't know but i'm kind of thinking it would be nice if i'm in one room and i go i meet someone i think they'd be interested in i can say oh here talk to them i'm really looking forward to seeing how this works i can anticipate me using twitter live a lot at social media marketing world but i will still be kate will be up in the middle of the night <laughs> or very early in the morning I, I worked it out and I can't remember which one I would definitely be doing the digital coffee from social media marketing world look forward to that one bags under the eyes might be slightly drunk okay moving on then we've had Periscope I'm gonna give those big love hugs I always feel bad giving Twitter stuff a Facebook thumbs up so well done Periscope nice little updates now you probably didn't miss this one you probably saw this because they did a great job publicising. YouTube came up with some new stats this week. Now, I used to love it because when I trained YouTube, I would, they would always produce these brilliant stats that would say, you know, users watch on average 10 days of YouTube videos per day. I love those statistics. And then they kind of went away and I was just going, those numbers are obviously getting so big that, that days aren't relevant anymore. And it's true. Because now, YouTube users watch 1 billion, 1 billion hours of video per day. So that's a number we can't really relate to, is it? 1 billion. We know that's the number of people on Facebook. I think there's 6 billion people in the world, so it's a sixth of the world. That's the size of it. But how, what does that relate to in time? And this is what I really like. And this is really, I think, good information if you're thinking... Of releasing some stats for marketing about your business or your industry. I just love the way they framed this. Let's put that into perspective. If you were to sit and watch a billion hours of YouTube, it would take you a hundred thousand years. A hundred thousand years ago, our ancestors were crafting stone tools and migrating to Africa, while mammoths and mass mastodons, I don't even know what they are, roamed the earth. If you spent 100,000 years travelling at the speed of light, you could travel from one end of the Milky Way to the other and you wouldn't age a day. And if you searched 100,000 years on YouTube, you'd find a really killer kiss track. I just think that's brilliant. I just love the way they framed that. They put links in it through. So now I can click the, that and it will bring me through to a kiss track, which is called 100,000 years. Um, so I love, I think this is very clever. Thanks for joining Ema. You miss, my, I'm not going to do my mug trick a third time, but you miss my lovely little cup of coffee that I've got today. Glad you've got coffee too. I just think that's a big lesson that we can learn about how we can frame big numbers. Um, if any of you read the book club read this month, which was made to stick by Chip and his brother, Chip and Dan Heath, this was one of the things that they talked about, how you can put numbers into perspective. And when I read it, of course, it resonated with me because I'd read the book, but it also seemed a really clever way to frame it. More than half of the viewers on YouTube watch on a mobile device, which I also find really interesting because for me personally, I'm more likely to watch a YouTube video on my computer, but then I think I'm on my computer a lot more than your average person. Do let me know for you, are you a YouTube on computer person or are you a YouTube on mobile person? And the final statistic was, okay, lots of, I just got lots of, I couldn't find the exact statistics, but it was reported that lots of video on YouTube is now being watched with the sound off. I guess that makes sense because of course, we, if people are watching on mobile, they're often in a space where they can't actually watch that video. They can't actually tune in and put the sound up unless they've got headphones on because you know there's other things going on around them so those auto captions we've talked about them before they're more important and actually while i'm at it really good computer okay really good tip from murray smith recently i was watching a facebook live she was involved in and she was suggesting that when you do a facebook live if i was to try and caption this it'd take me all day but to just caption the first minute or so because that's enough time to get people to switch on the sound clever tip from Murray Smith 
Okay, we've got a ton of Facebook news. We give, well, I don't know whether to give LinkedIn. I'm going to give LinkedIn, no, I'm going to give YouTube a thumbs up for um, being clever, having a clever product and marketing in a clever way. Facebook, I'm going to go Facebook. You actually watch it on mobile, but use the projection button on my mobile app to project it onto my pay PlayStation. All right, so that would be like um, streaming like on um, AirPlay if you're using an iPhone. So it's a, a similar thing. So the hmm, thing is I have an Apple TV so we can just watch YouTube directly on the Apple TV. Hmm. Don't do that very often. I tend to be a Netflix on the Apple TV person. That's interesting to know. Actually, I was thinking of getting one of those Chromecasts for when I'm traveling. Haha, <laughs> Sarah Murphy said that at the same time. You use a Chromecast it to your TV. So even though we're watching it on mobile, we are actually watching it big. That's interesting to know. Okay, Facebook. We will do the first bit of Facebook news, which, let me scroll to the top, because I was supposed to mention it earlier. New, oh, this is a good one. There's going to be, they are rolling it out, a new Facebook inbox for your pages. And it integrates everyone into one spot, so less clicking around to see exactly what you want. When I first heard about this, I was thinking, you know, that's going to get a bit messy. There's so many notifications that come in. Notifications are going to end up here. It's going to just get in the way of messages and other information. But actually, you know, I don't know why I'm surprised Facebook are smart. It's laid out in a very smart fashion. So... You can see here there's, ooh, it wants to, I, you know, the problem with the screen flip is I'm used to looking in a mirror. Does that make sense? So I'm not looking in a mirror. I'm looking as you can see me. You can't really see that, but there's three tabs at the top for your messenger, your Facebook and your um, Instagram all in one spot. So you'll be able to skip between them. Now I was thinking I get so many spammy messages, uh, comments on Instagram. In fact, I go in there every day and try and delete loads of them. I still don't get them all that that would get in the way, but actually because they're going to be in their separate tabs, that's kind of cool. And then, and this is really good. This is cool, right? One day I will master this. Oh, we skip back to the old photo. So here you can see, you get the option to um, follow it up. So sometimes this happens a lot because when somebody messages me on Facebook, I'll forget about it because it's not like email. I can mark it as unread and that notification will be there the next time I go in. I can mark it as unread, but that means nothing. So if I want to remember that somebody's messaged me through my Facebook page, I can now click this follow up button. Ooh, there you go. I don't know if you can see it just here at the top of the screen. When I click that, I have a follow-up folder that I can go into and it will have all the messages that I haven't dealt with or notifications I can put in there as well. This will be great for keeping in touch with them. So, Facebook are trying to take down YouTube. They own live streaming. They have destroyed Snapchat, even though the share sold for loads yesterday. Is their next target email? Because this will work as well as email. I think they tried to email before a few times, but there you go. I like this. I'm gonna give Facebook a big thumbs up. It's gonna make it easier and quicker for us to manage our Facebook messages effectively. And I won't forget when people message me on a Saturday or Sunday and I go, I can't answer that until I'm on my computer. I won't forget about it. It'll be great. Don't message me on a Saturday or Sunday though. I like to sleep. Okay, um, another bit of Facebook news then, while we're getting through it. Oh, this is an exciting one. This is about the algorithm. It's not big, it's not a big change that they've decided they have to make a big announcement about, but it's something interesting. It has been, let me just find it, it has been a year since reactions were launched onto Facebook. So that's where you can now click a smiley face or you can click an angry face or you can click a or you can click a laugh or you can click a heart they've been around a year and you may have noticed I don't know if everyone's got this but you may have noticed now you can react to a comment on a post not just a post a year in they have admitted yeah I know a year 
Oh yeah, us in Ireland, we got it first. We were special. Um, they have admitted now that reactions, when somebody hits a reaction, it is going to carry more weight against your post or for your post than just a simple like. They've discovered that when people hit a reaction, they feel stronger about the post that they're reacting to and it's a signal that they want to see more stuff like that in their newsfeed. So as businesses on our business pages, reactions, so you can all now react to this video and give it a, a heart or you can give it a, a smiley face or a shocked face, that's my favourite. Do you remember the yay? Yay didn't last very long, I particularly like the yay. Now I just type yay. Um, but apparently this would be good. Thank you for all your reactions. <laughs> so much fun. Um, anyway, this means that if you get reactions on your post, it's better than somebody clicking the like button. So the like button is bottom of the rung. Then you'll have somebody reacting to your posts. I love all your... I think my personal off is better. I used to do this thing on Snapchat where I tried to um, impersonate emojis every day. And then we've got angry. This is all good. This is all good. So we've got likes at the bottom. We've got... Um, I'm going to have to stop laughing. We've got reactions above that. Then, of course, there's comments. <coughs> Angry face. And then we've got loads when we've got shares. So that's the order that it goes in. More reactions, better. Now, of course, you can't ask people for reactions. If you try and game this by telling people, like I just did, to react to your post, that's probably not going to go down well. Um, half of the reactions, just for a weird stat, half of the reactions used on Facebook are the heart symbol. So we love that. More choice, chance for, choice for passive, aggressive likes, in your opinions, but I'm a cynic. <laughs> I don't know, you see, as long as they don't use negative signals. So angry doesn't mean a negative signal, it just means that you promote to, uh, an emotion, emot provoke, provokes an emotion so somebody could be angry at something they've seen on Twitter on Twitter on Facebook you know but that doesn't mean they're angry with the business so as long as it doesn't turn into a negative signal I think this is all good fun but yes don't try and game it let's just have a bit of fun right on to before I get on to the last bit of um, Facebook news because that was just new this morning you're still waiting for I can't really see what that is is that a I'm going to stop trying to do emojis. <laughs> Can you ask for a reaction as a, an opinion to a post? Like, what's your reaction to? Mm, I'd be careful with using the word reaction. I would... I think it might work for a short amount of time. That's what I'm thinking. Um, but as soon as Facebook sees anyone gaming it, they'll just crack down on it. So I suppose the thing Facebook always say when they have an algorithm post is just post good content for your audience. And always think about the emotional reaction you might get from that content. So, you know, if you're being funny, then you'll get funnies. If you are putting something cute up, you'll get heart shapes. Kate is going mad with the, <laughs> with the reactions now. Um... It probably will work for a while, but it's like the words like and share. Facebook sees those words and it doesn't like them. Right, on to Twitter, because Twitter have been, by their promise, rolling out these new anti-abuse tools, which I think is great news. I'm not going to tell you why again, because you've heard me banging on about it enough times. But it's good news. It's good news because I really think this will fix Twitter. So already we've seen a few things, like they've uh, managed to collapse tweets that they think think are abusive, that um, if you mute an account, even if they're replying to a conversation, you won't see their tweets and your notifications. Those are things along those lines. Little niggly things that were still enabling people to be abusive on Twitter. Um, now they are introducing an algorithm that will identify abusive behaviour. And the sort of thing they mean from that is when somebody is showering someone who doesn't follow them with um, 
unsolicited tweets so they wouldn't be a reply to a conversation that that person hasn't got into a conversation so if they see a lot of that their algorithm should pick it up and remove it from your notifications that's the first thing that's going to happen um, also they may limit the accounts of people that do that limit them you remember we talked about this before by limiting they mean that you'll no longer your tweets will no longer appear in the feeds of people that don't follow you so it just doesn't matter how much you retweet how much you liked how much you include people in your tweets unless they follow you they won't see you for a, a period of time it's like the new twitter jail a serious jail this time um, they admit that at the beginning they're going to make mistakes here so they may end up like restricting tweets that didn't need to be restricted but they need to teach the algorithm how to do it there's a scary word popping up here isn't there algorithm we don't want algorithm on twitter or at least not a newsfeed algorithm but I do think this is really important I'm glad to see them doing something now they're filtering out that you can filter I went in to see if I had this function I don't have it yet but now you can go into your notifications and you can filter out people from your no notification stream so you won't see them if for example they don't have a profile photo or if they don't haven't verified their email address or if they haven't verified their phone number because we know abusive people on Twitter tend to hide behind anonymous accounts so this is a way that you can exclude those people and particularly people who set up accounts just to abuse people um, they're expa oh this is the best bit they're expanding mute so at the moment you can mute phrases from your notifications feed but now you'll be able to mute phrases from your timeline so if you wanted to get rid of mentions of cats, you get a Twitter eggheads. Yes, exactly. And Laura there was saying that she was able to block someone last week. Glad that that worked for you. So now you can actually mute people as well for a short period of time. So, for example, I don't like I'm trying to think of something I don't like now. I just like everything. I'm not mad on reality TV shows. So if there was a reality TV show on, actually there's a lot of people I follow that get involved in a lot of Twitter chats, which is brilliant. It's brilliant. Twitter chats are a great way to meet people and do business. But sometimes I'll log in the next day. Yeah, Kardashians, there's an example. And all I'll see is a load of retweets from that Twitter chat. So a good way for me to avoid seeing that is I'll be able to mute that word that relates to that Twitter chat for say 24 hours and it means all it's doing is it's cleaning up my feed and I still get to follow those wonderful people I'm following on Twitter but the problem with Twitter chats unless you're involved in them at the time that they're, they're not that relevant so I can see that working and yes during the Kardashians or you know I don't think I blocked the Late Late Show because that's the only reason I know what's on but there's there's lots of examples of TV shows that end up I know football soccer I don't want to, I do not care who wins the football or the soccer, who Man United are playing this week. Let's get rid of it. I really, really like that. That's like muting a group chat on WhatsApp. I didn't know you could do that. I'm not a big WhatsApp user, but now I know that's a good function to know about. Um, and you will be getting, if you report someone on Twitter for abuse, you'll get more communication from Twitter in the future. Hence, I think it's a really good thing. I have to commend Twitter big time. And as you remember, Twitter get the heart for this because I think they're really addressing a big issue that a lot of us have on Twitter. And I know when I talk to groups of people, they have big concerns about joining Twitter or joining in on Twitter because they're scared yeah. of abuse. And, you know, abuse doesn't happen that much on Twitter. Well, probably not as much as we think. Just, of course it happens but I don't think people need to be as scared about going on to Twitter as uh, many would be right final bit of news then I've got one minute left it may take me a little bit longer than one minute but bear with me this is a good one it's about um, Facebook and it's about Facebook ads so if you've created a Facebook ad you may have already fallen in love with um, look-alike audiences so look-alike audiences if you create a um, if you've got this many people liking your page and it's only say you know 100,000 people that's not a lot of people to advertise to and instead of going to friends of the people who like your page because they may not be similar to you at all I've got friends from every walk of life you know there, it, there's no point advertising cat stuff to them because they won't like it I like it they won't 
But if you want to expand your audience, one thing you can do is you can create a lookalike audience. And what this does is Facebook will look at the people who like your page and find traits they have in common and identify people on Facebook that are similar. And then when you've got this, when you bring it into your ads, you can actually narrow that down further. So you can narrow it down to people in this lookalike audience that like cats, for example. Now, up until now, and again, I don't have this yet. I looked this morning, still don't have it, but should have it soon. Up until now, you could only create a lookalike audience for one country at a time. So, you know, I'd choose a lookalike audience for Ireland or a lookalike audience for the UK or a lookalike audience for the US. Now you'll be able to select multiple countries to go into that lookalike audience. Um, so I could, instead of having those three separately, I could have a lookalike audience for the people who like spider working, Amanda Webb spider working. And that could include people from Ireland, people from the UK and people from the US. But it gets broader than that even because Facebook are putting those countries into zones. So there's a Eurozone and there's a, oh dear, a brick zone, I think. So, you know, there's different areas that you might want to target. So if I want to target all of Europe, I don't have to collect every individual country now. I can just choose the whole of Europe. And then, of course, I'd narrow it down language wise when I get into the, the section below that. I think this is a big um, update for lookalike audiences. I've been pleasantly surprised at how helpful lookalike audiences can be. Before you go, that's my last bit of news for today. Um, I will link to all this shortly underneath the post. But I wanted to let you know about a webinar coming up that I'm doing. It on, she looks at her calendar, the 3rd of April at 6pm Irish time. You can register for it here. As you know, I'm a big lover of Twitter. It is hugely effective for business, hugely. And I think a lot of people kind of give up too early. So this is... The webinar I'm running in association with Digital for Sales. It's free to join. I have done an entire course with them on this that, of course, you have to pay for. But join the webinar anyway. That's free. Spiderworking.com forward slash Twitter webinar. If you want to make sales from Twitter, this is the one from you. Until next week, have a great weekend. It's been lovely to see you. Goodbye.